Good morning. morning. And welcome to worship this day. Um, A special day, as you can see, we have much to celebrate today. My name is Pam Smith, and I'm the pastor here at Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lakeland, Florida. And it is my pleasure to be with those of you who are on site with us, as well as those of you joining us online. Several announcements um, today. First of all, the photo directories are ready. Woohoo! And so you can pick one up in the narthex, is that right? Okay, and special thanks to um, Mary Flecky, to Tom Mack, to Naomi Thompson, to Jean Fico, um, and to all who participated, those of you who had your photos taken as well. This is an important part of our life together, and so we're very, very grateful. We have enough copies that have been made so you can have one for each household, and that leaves us a few extras to give to people as they join our community of faith. Next Sunday is the Super Bowl. And I don't know about you, but I'm not planning on going to the Super Bowl and enjoying a tailgate party. But we're gonna have tailgating here for our fellowship time after service. So if you love chips and dip like I do, if you love guacamole, yum yum, if you like chicken wings, anything like that, please plan on joining us afterwards. You can bring a dip to share, you can bring some chips, um, and we'll have other things provided as well. Of course, it was almost a week ago that we became aware of the shooting here in Lakeland. Um, I was stunned, as I know others of you were. I know that we have some members of our congregation um, who were directly involved in responding to that. And so we are grateful for all of the first and second and third responders. Um, If you have been affected by this shooting, and if you would like to have some pastoral conversation, I promise I won't have answers, but I do have a very soft shoulder and an open ear so we can have conversation about that. I know there were many people in the area um, right before this happened and right after it happened, Um, and it is um, shocking to see that level of violence brought to our own backyard. Um, It's been very difficult for me to manage as well. So if you'd like to have conversation, I'm happy to do that. So today, um, you see the quilts that we have here. We're gonna, these were stitched by many members of our congregation, and we are grateful for that. (laughs) Well, we'll talk about that when we get to the blessing part later in our service. This is a quiz. Our mission statement. Our mission is to share God's love with each other, our community, and our world. And that love is overflowing today, and we have evidence of that with the quilts, but also with some other things that we're involved with in the community. Um, Brian, raise your hand up or stand up or something like that. Brian is our Thrivent rep. Um, Many of us know him because we are Thrivent members. Um, If you are a Thrivent member or an associate member, right, raise your hand. Guess what? There's money that we don't want to leave on the table. So Brian's going to talk with us um, later today in Fellowship Hall in one of the corners there about Thrivent action teams. Um, that those of us who are members, we have funds that are available to use to further our mission. Um, And so we're grateful for your presence with us, Brian. Also with us today is Steve, help me with your pronunciation, Bissonette? All right, come on up, Steve. Steve is with VISTI, which is one of the organizations that we support um, and was our, come on up. See that right cross? That's the spot. Um, VISTI is one of the agencies that we work very closely with and Let's see, where's Dan? Dan, for January, right? We collected in January Correct. for VISTI, and so we've got a table full of things. You don't need to take them with you, but, they will, but if you'd like. I walked here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you have some words for us about VISTI. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. And thank you all for the opportunity to be here and to personally express my gratitude for your continued care and compassion for seniors in our community. I see um, the long list of activities and outreach that you're involved in in our community, 
And as I walk in and look at the quilts, I don't know about you, but just walking in brings a smile to my face because this also is an expression of God's love. Yes. Many times to people you will never meet. Mm -hmm. But just looking at these, you can tell there was a lot of care, there was a lot of love, there was a lot of time and attention put into that. And the person who receives that gift will be aware of that just by seeing this handiwork. The same is true with what we try to do at VISTI, Volunteers in Service to the Elderly. I'm gonna ask a, maybe a rhetorical question. How many of you are already familiar with VISTI? I had a feeling. <laughs> you are a very um, generous and compassionate group. And for those of you who don't know, Volunteers in the Service to the Elderly has been in this community now this is our 40th year, and there is no other VISTI on the planet. We are only here in this local community to serve seniors in need of help to stay safely and independently in their own home. Our youngest, listen that carefully, our youngest client is 70 years old. Our eldest recently turned 107. Wow. <laughs> Still living independently in her own home primarily because she has the ability to access transportation to get to medical appointments. She has the ability to access some food, whether supplemental groceries, some of the items you have collected, or hot meals. Perhaps she needs some personal care products, again, among the things that you have helped to collect. You may not personally ever meet her or any of our other clients, but your care and compassion is expressed through your gifts just as they are through these quilts. So on behalf of the more than 4,000 seniors that we are able to serve from Lakeland, Bartow, Mulberry, and Fort Meade, thank you. Thank you for putting God's care, love, and compassion into action in a way that not only helps to meet their physical needs, but also their spiritual and emotional mental needs as well. Wonderful. God bless you. And you as well, Steve, for the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Last week, we pondered um, some of the questions that Jesus asked as he, when he told the parable of the sheep and the goats. When have I ever seen you hungry? When have I seen you thirsty? When have I seen you cold? Um, and Jesus said, to the extent that you've done it to one of the least of these, you've done it unto me. And so this is a way of touching people with the love of Jesus. So we've got something new in your pews, actually not brand new, but something that has come back to us the friendship registers. So if you are with us today, we would ask you to complete that information. Um, and when you complete it, then pass it down the pew and to somebody else. And somebody might say, but pastor, we signed in at the door. Why do we need to do this? Two different purposes. When you sign in at the door, we're doing that as part of our COVID health precautions so that in the event that we would find out that there was a case of somebody here at church, we could contact people and let them know so that they can be tested and so forth as well. And the friendship register is for our outreach and for us getting to know you, getting to be able to be in contact with you and you with us. So we thank especially June and Ruth who are kind of behind all of this so, so religiously and we're grateful. Um, with that, let us then prepare our hearts and our minds for worship.
would you please stand and turn to face the baptismal font? <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, who is indeed our Savior. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
us pray. Lord God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your Spirit, show us the things we ought to do and give us the grace and power so to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is taken from the 58th chapter of Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the the head like a bulrush, and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not, the fast that I, is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see naked? when you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. The word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith may rest not in human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which, is, which God decreed before the ages for our glory None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within. So also no one comprehends what is truly God's, except for the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. The word of the Lord. And now I realize that the two pages turned and we're gonna go back and read Psalm 112 responsively. (laughs) Sorry about that. Hallelujah, happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Wealth and wit- riches will be in their house and their righteousness will last forever. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. 
They will not be afraid of evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. Thank you. Would you please stand for the Holy Gospel? Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. And Jesus said, Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, no, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, Whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So it was just a few weeks ago that I confessed to you that my Christmas tree was still up. And I told you about a friend of mine who consoled me by saying <clears throat> that the Christmas season, strictly speaking, doesn't end until candle mass. Now, to be honest with you, I've not paid much attention to this holy day, but my friend's observation piqued my interest. Candle mass is 40 days after Christmas. It is also known as the Feast of the Presentation of Jesus in the Temple. You see, Jewish law called for the presentation of the firstborn son at the temple 40 days after the child was born. Now, 40 days after December 25th is February 2nd, last Thursday. And so today, we're in the midst of a Candlemas celebration of our own. This feast has been celebrated in the church since the mid-300s. It's got a long, long history, though it's not as familiar to those of us in Lutheran congregations. Now, the gospel reading appointed for candle mass is one that appears only one other time in the lectionary, on the first Sunday of Christmas. It's a very tender and very moving story 
about two people that we don't hear much about in the scriptures, but frankly, I have grown increasingly fond of them, Anna and Simeon. Hear this account that we read from the Gospel of St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother, that would be Mary and Joseph, were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. And this too is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Anna and Simeon. Two people who were not young. Two people who didn't seem to have family, at least not close by. Two people who spent a lot of time at the temple. Two people whom we're trying to show you a picture of. <laughs> so what, what are we doing, Marty? We, we lost Wi-Fi. We lost Wi-Fi. That's not good. So we're, we, we're resetting everything, is that it? So you've noticed that we have the TV screen. This is new to us, and we use it in order to post art and other information and so forth in our life as a community of faith. And I found a wonderful, wonderful image that I, I'm trusting will come up. If not, we'll be sure to have it at our Facebook page and on the website. Anna and Simeon. Two people who spent a lot of time in the temple. Two people who loved God and had been given a measure of understanding and wisdom. Two people committed to righteousness, devotion, prayer, and fasting, and to worship. Two people, not famous heroes of the church. In fact, they seldom even make it into Sunday school lessons. But in my estimation, they are giants in faith. Luke's account is important because it shows us the faithfulness of Mary and Joseph in complying with Jewish custom and tradition. They were not renegades disregarding Torah, nor would their son abolish the law, not a letter, not even a stroke, we hear. No, they lived in fulfillment of the law. So to the temple they came for the simple rites 
of purification and presentation. And Simeon, having been prepared by the Holy Spirit, sees Jesus, takes him in his arms and praises God, and his hymn lives on in the church today. Now, Lord, I am ready. My life is full. I have seen your salvation, a light of revelation for all people. And then comes Anna, who is 84 years old, widowed after only seven years of marriage, persistently at the temple day in and day out. For all intents and purposes, it was her home. And she too, upon seeing Jesus, began to praise God and then told the story of Jesus to all who would hear. And scripture tells us that Mary and Joseph were amazed at what was happening before their eyes. Now get the context here. Mary and Joseph, who just a few weeks earlier had given birth, heard the song of the angels, greeted the shepherds, smelled the animals, and pondered all that was happening. Remember, we hear that. Mary pondered those things in her heart. And now here they are in the temple with Anna and Simeon. Anna and Simeon. We're trying to get them. It's a wonderful picture when you see it. <laughs> Anna and Simeon, salt of the earth, people, don't you think? When Jesus preached his Sermon on the Mount, he was certainly not thinking about them specifically, but he surely was describing them when he told the crowd and his disciples, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. Salt and light, common images. Songs have been sung, poems have been written, pictures have been drawn, describing the importance of salt and light. I want you to notice a couple of things that Jesus said. And this is especially important to me because I tend to be, um, to get on the treadmill of try harder, do better, try harder, do better, try harder, do better. If only I did more, if only, if only. Jesus didn't say, try real hard to be salt. Try real hard to be light. Jesus said, you are salt. You are light. Salt does not try to be saltier. Light doesn't work hard to shine. Salt simply is. Light simply is. And we are salt and light. We are salt and light because we are the baptized people of God. We have been washed and recreated, drawn into relationship with God and with one another. We are marked with the cross of Christ forever. And we are changed forever by the grace of God. Anna and Simeon were salt and light, and they gave witness to Jesus, who is the very light of the world. And we are called to the same. Be salt. Be light. Thanks be to God.
and Simeon. <laughs> they had a hard time getting here today, but they made it. You know, we are grateful for technology, and we know that there are times when it doesn't work the way we want it to, but still, it is one of the gifts that God has given us as we proclaim gospel. You may be seated. Isn't it, though? Yeah, Mary and Joseph looking on. I look at the faces there. That's what really grabbed me. No, I'm not going to do a whole nother sermon here. But those faces are so full of joy. Anna and Simeon. So, quilt time. How many quilts? 92. 92. Last year it was 83, if I remember correctly. Um, this is one of my favorite Sundays because, as Steve said, when you come in, it brings a smile to your face almost automatically, and we're grateful. Now, each of these were, pe were cut and pieced and stitched and assembled by people here. If you had a part, if your fingerprints are on these quilts, would you please raise your hands? No, you better yet, stand up. Stand up. Yes. these quilts. So where are they going, Pastor? Well, we don't know exactly because they go where they're needed. Um, these are going to be boxed up tomorrow, is that right? So if you're able to help, please see Barb McPeak. They're going to be shipped to Lutheran World Relief. Now, I believe it was two years ago that we had all of these quilts, and, and we were in the middle of COVID at that time, um, and they got shipped, and they ended up in Lebanon because of the explosion at the dock. Many, many, many quilts were destroyed in that. And so this was of particular use. Now, I don't know where they're going to be this time, um, but we know this. They are going to people who need warmth and love and care. And so I am so grateful for that. But it's not just the quilts. 25. 25 hygiene kits. Inside here is a toothbrush, a comb, a nail clipper, soap, and that's it? Okay, tied up. And these two, we have 25 of these that are going to go to people who need these for basic dignity, cleanliness. You know, as Steve was talking about the elderly here who need basic needs met, we know that those... Uh, Maslow's hierarchy, how many familiar? Basic needs need to be met before the higher needs can even be touched. And so meeting basic needs of food, cleanliness, warmth, we are grateful. So would you please pray with me? Lord God, we come before you this day grateful for the abundance that you have poured into our lives grateful for the hearts that respond to this abundance by giving generously to those in need. We give you thanks for those whose fingerprints are all over these gifts of quilts and hygiene kits. We thank you for their love of you, their devotion to you and to your people. We pray your blessing, Lord, upon all who will receive these gifts. Let them, through the power of your Holy Spirit, feel an extra touch of the love that you have for them, the love that we share with them. And so, Lord, we also pray that you would strengthen us, that you would renew our gifts of generosity because of the abundance you have given to us. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Would you please stand as we continue? Believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and actions. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways that we have tolerated and practiced injustice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Inspire our wonder at creation from the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night. Sustain the unseen depths of the ocean to the plants and animals we know so well. Bring healing to lands and communities experiencing natural disasters. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Instruct the powerful in your ways. Provide upright leadership in business and industry that workers are not oppressed. Throughout the world, inspire voters and raise up politicians to heed your call for nations to practice righteousness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst. Grant peace to the endless quarrels, put an end to hunger, and break every yoke of oppression. Shelter all who flee abuse in their homes or violence in their communities. Satisfy those afflicted in any way. Bring healing and deliverance from addiction to those in need, particularly Arlene, Tim, Mabel, Mike, Anna Mae, Julie, Carol G, Carol, Anne, Lydia, Paul, Will, John, <coughs> Betty, Scott, Marion L, Ron, Flo, Doris, Dottie, Teresa, Marion P, Ian, Tim, Julie, Ruth, Ed, Henry, Mary, Greg, and Max. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Shape our congregation to be salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. Make us steadfast in our trust in you, ready with tangible mercy and compassion for our neighbors. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for all those whose unshaken faith in Christ shines forth in their witness. Keep them in our remembrance and bring us with them into the kingdom of heaven. Merciful God, we bring to you our needs and our hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. We safely share a sign of that peace with one another. Prepare now to receive our offerings as we return to God a portion of that which God has entrusted to us.
you please stand? Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as your people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. We are bold to pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
us, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> My friends, this is the Lord's table. It is the Lord who bids you welcome, please come. We commune at the altar rail. You may kneel wherever there is an opening. After you have received the host, the first chalice will be one for intinction in which you dip your host into the chalice. The second chalice is for drinking and the third chalice is a chalice of juice. Please come, all is now ready.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, preserve us unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and to journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, I invite you to join in to the singing of our sending hymn. You can go get that chorus. Okay. I invite you to move toward the side aisles, please. And so it is that we have this charge to the people, and it's one that we join in, charging each other as well as ourselves. Go out into the world in peace. Go out into the world. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Hold fast to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Help the suffering. Rejoice in beauty. Rejoice in beauty. Do justice. Do justice. Love kindness. Love Walk, humbly with God. Walk humbly with God. And may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Follow the way of Jesus. Thanks.
We have a lot going. So this weekend is, I think, uh, so an ensemble for fans. And then mine is, mine's also next week. So it's so, so an ensemble. Uh, yeah. Hi, ladies. Hi. Oh, they're going to be fancy. Where have you been? Good for them. Um, Good for them. Good for her. 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 I know. And we don't exactly. Yeah. And, and honestly, we are. But you know, for as miserable as we all were, at least we've done it over with at the same time, and it wasn't wrong and wrong. Somebody has this, and somebody has this. Yeah, but that's what it was. Were you boosted? Oh, yeah. 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 That's why you I had everything I could possibly get. Yeah. We all did. It's a lot. It is, but whatever. Yeah, the headaches and the We'll keep doing this weekend. We'll just do it. But anyway, it's over with. Well, I'm glad you're here. Oh, I'm glad to be back. Yeah. You know, We're doing fine. Keep practicing. Keep getting better. Yeah.